hello to everybody and uh, welcome to the class. I know there's all kinds of issues with registration and uh, who is here and who can't and we'll, we'll figure this out. Uh, for now, just relax and we'll, we'll sort it out. Um, I thought I would start by uh, giving you a definition of behavioral economics. So, what is behavioral economics? So because I want to be precise, I'm going to, to read it. If one examines the standard economic narrative, one is faced with a choice. Either accept its dialectic, enigmatic theory, or conclude that the marketplace is capable of significant power of self-direction and governance. Moreover, given that, as suggested by Foucault, consciousness is interchangeable with language, this means that the power of economic theory is not limited to the marketplace, and instead, it is creating an internal and in some ways inescapable narrative within which we construct our ideas and aspirations. As a consequence, Wilson has argued that society is used in the service of capitalism. However, it is not so much that society is used in the service of capitalism, but rather it is the general and eventually fatal flaw of society. Thus, if the neoclassical economic theory holds, we have to choose between the self-governance of the individual and an economic actor and the narrative of the capitalistic discourse. As best example of work in this area, the primary theme of the works of Adam Smith is the common ground between language and society. Several discourses concerning this abstraction, and some would say the economy in general, may be found. However, the futility and subsequently the demise of subcapitalistic theory as depicted in Spelling's model are self-evident. And this brings us to the big, uh, I think, question that, of the, that we want to, uh, to address, which is, So, <laughs> what, what I read for you was a sequence of randomly generated words. <laughs> it's taken from a, an engine that is supposed to generate postmodern literature. Uh, and I, I embedded a few words of, about capitalism and Adam Smith and uh, in it, <clears throat> and what I want you to reflect for a second is the question of why didn't you stop me? I kept on reading this nonsense for a while. <laughs> uh, you, you must have realized that you had no idea what was uh, discussed, but none of you stopped me, right? And the question is why? And what, what I would suggest that this is a a part of a behavior we call pluralistic ignorance. So think to yourself, you were sitting there and you were saying, I have no idea what this is about, but you were looking at the people around you and nobody of them were raising their hands. So you probably said to yourself, I must be the only person who doesn't catch it yet and maybe later on I will catch it, but for now I have no idea what's going on. Now, what we find is that capitali uh, pluralistic ignorance is especially powerful in big classes, which this is one of them. Imagine you were in my office and you asked me something about to define behavioral economics and I went into reading this. How many of you would stop me very quickly? Probably all of you. You would not let me go through two or three sentences without stopping me. But somehow, because there are so many people around us, our tendency is not to ask questions. So the reason I want to start with this is that we're a big class and we're just starting the semester. And during this semester, there'll be many opportunities in which you'll feel that you're the only person who has no idea what's going on around you and everybody else, you'll interpret their silence as meaning that everybody else is on board and you're the only one who has no idea what's going on. Try and not think like this. And if you have any question during the semester, just raise your hand. You'll do a service for your fellow students by being the one who's asking the question. Okay, so that was what I wanted to uh, start with. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's challenging to everybody to have a big, a big class, but uh, 
try to participate. If there are questions, ask. Um, don't worry about interfering. Always assume that if you don't understand something, most likely other people don't understand it as well.